with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's Pentecost. Pentecost is a wonderful festival in our Christian year. It's the time we remember that Jesus ascended into heaven and then sent his Holy Spirit to be with us forever. Those words in our chapel up on the wall which say, be assured I'm with you always to the end of time, relate to the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus living with us in a mysterious way, invisible and yet full of power and love and joy for each one of us. More about Pentecost in a moment. But first a confession. Let us confess our sins to God. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We go to sing a Pentecost hymn in just a moment. It's a hymn that was sung 34 and a half years ago when I was ordained priest. It was a wonderful day and the words of the hymn are in the form of a prayer. It's a hymn to the Holy Spirit. Listen. O thou who camest from above, the fire celestial to impart, kindle a flame of sacred love on the mean altar of my heart. And then verse 2, speaking about that flame of sacred love, there let it for thy glory burn with inextinguishable blaze and trembling to its source return in humble prayer and fervent praise. And then verse 3, and these are the two verses, 3 and 4, which have stuck in my heart and mind for the last 34 and a half years. Jesus Confirm my heart's desire to work and speak and think for thee. Still let me guard the holy fire and still stir up the gift in me. And then the last verse, ready for all thy perfect will, my acts of faith and love repeat till death thy endless mercy seal and make the sacrifice complete. With all those images of flame and fire in mind, let us listen to the words of the Collect. Holy Spirit sent by the Father, ignite in us your holy fire, strengthen your children with the gift of faith, revive your church with the bread of love, and renew the face of the earth through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Shortly after that wonderful day of my ordination, I remember walking to church one winter's evening to preach about the Holy Spirit. And I saw the building of the church floodlit as I turned the corner. And I realized as I walked into church that that was exactly the illustration my sermon needed, a floodlit church. And when floodlighting is well done, the floodlights are placed so that you don't need to see them. In fact, you're not supposed to see where the light's coming from. What you're meant to see is just the building on which the floodlights are being trained. Uh, look at this picture of Lincoln Cathedral. It's floodlit in red, white and blue for VE Day just a few weeks ago. You might have seen the picture on, on the media. And what you want is to make the building visible when otherwise it would not be seen because of the darkness. And the floodlighting is to maximize the dignity of the building by throwing all its details into relief so that you can see it properly. And this is exactly what the Holy Spirit's role is. The Holy Spirit, we remember coming to be with us all at Pentecost, and he is like the hidden floodlight shining on Jesus. Or think of it like this, it, it, it's as if the Spirit stands behind us, throwing a light over our shoulder onto Jesus who's standing facing us. So the Spirit's message to us is never look at me, listen to me, come to me, get to know me. But the Holy Spirit's message is always look at him, come to him, listen to him, go to him and have life. Get to know him and you will have joy and peace. And the Spirit, we might say, is, is there to ensure that we are connected up to Jesus. There was an explorer, a, a great Norwegian explorer called Roald Amundsen, and he was the first to discover the magnetic meridian of the North Pole and, and the South Pole. And on one of his trips, Amundsen took a homing pigeon with him. And when he had finally reached the top of the world, he opened the bird's cage and set it free. Now, imagine his wife back in Norway when she looked up from the doorway of her home and she sees this pigeon circling the sky above. Can you imagine her exclaiming about her husband? He's alive. My husband is still alive. And so it is that when Jesus ascended, he was gone, but the disciples hung on to his promise that he would send them the Holy Spirit. And what joy when the Holy Spirit came at Pentecost. He's alive. The disciples had with them this reminder, Jesus is alive, even though you can't see him. He'll be with you always in some mysterious way. So we thank God for his Holy Spirit today. Now, let's sing that hymn which was sung at my ordination. Please pay special attention to the words. They were my prayer 34 and a half years ago. Um, but you may want to make them a prayer yourself. Your prayer.
Let us pray. It would be easy to feel sorry for myself, Lord, to feel frustrated about the long hours away from my friends or worry about what might happen to me or my loved ones. But what good would that do? What help would it bring to me or to anyone? Teach me instead to think of others and to ask myself what I can do for them. For we can all do something, whatever our situation. A letter, card, phone call, text, a tweet, post, message. If nothing else, through such things as these, I can stay in touch, show concern, offer companionship, express love, offer support. Show me what I can do, how I can help, in ways I might never even have considered. Whatever these days might bring, help me to make them not about me, but about others. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So thank you for joining me for this Pentecost service. Thank you to Dr. Stone, Dr. Burgos and Mr. Jones for the readings and have a wonderful day. And now the blessing. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you this day and always. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen.